this video is just assorted items about my um, uh, fishing on a kayak. Um, this kayak here is a Hobie Pro Angler. Um, this particular one is uh, PA 14 and 14 foot length. So what I'm going to talk about now is my favorite rods that I am kind of um, using most of the time. These are surprisingly enough, you know, twenty dollar rods you can buy at Amazon or at a Walmart. These are Berkeley HD right there um, medium heavy in a um, in seven foot length and the beauty about this outside of their you know inexpensive price is they're extremely sturdy they last forever they have extremely small stainless steel guides without any inserts in there so these take abuse of going in and out of this uh, rod holders exceptionally well um, over the course of time of uh, three years by now probably and um, I have two of them as you can see and this is what I more or less use all the time now with these I use this Akuma um, bait caster reels right here um, this came out about three years ago they're rated to about 25 pounds of drag extremely reliable they go for about maybe $140 on Amazon but uh, you know well worth it uh, this is Akuma uh, Komodo um, like I said I got them on Amazon I have two of them uh, these are loaded with 50 pound braid and they've been with me for a few seasons now and these are just uh, very nice uh, the beauty of this is really extremely low profile so on a kayak when you you know using them uh, it's, it's extremely convenient compared to compared to a regular uh, spin caster because the handles are so um, close uh, and a small diameter there uh, it doesn't really get in the, in the way so that's what i use um, about uh, once a season you would probably lose the tip that's right here at the end of the rod uh, right there now that one is really easy to repair, it effectively they just use hot glue. You can buy the stainless steel tip on eBay for a couple of dollars, you know, take the old one off by just simply heating it up with a heat gun or a lighter and putting a new one on and the uh, rod will be ready to serve you another year without any kind of trouble. So that's my favorite um, uh, reel and rod combination, Akuma Komodo. And, um, uh, Berkeley Cherrywood uh, HD. Um, these handle uh, blues and stripers of a really big size. They have enough backbone to where you can just, uh, you know, um, bring the fish in pretty quickly. They're not really limp at all. Uh, this way, you're not exposing fish to any kind of stress and you can, you know, catch and release uh, without uh, any kind of harm to them. Um, so, we're going to talk about the sorted stuff on the kayak. You can see here, these are the aftermarket. Um, paddles I got after the stock hobby ones uh, hobby ones were um, I guess lost you can probably see the name over there uh, also readily available on Amazon these are excellent they do float here you can see the system I fashioned to uh, attach them to the handle it's effectively a velcro strap times two one is here another one is here this way it hold, uh, holds the uh, paddles nice and secure I also have this um, from Amazon, I forgot the name, but uh, they're really nice. They have a, um, an opening and a number of latches that hold the stuff in place very securely. I have two of them, but still when you're transporting your kayak on a trailer or otherwise, uh, it helps to have the um, Velcro straps to secure the paddle so they don't come off. Um, here in the back you see a, a common item lots of people put on their kayaks. It's a milk crate and costs a few dollars. You can see that I use stock bungee cords to kind of run through the milk crate holes here. This way it kind of secures it to the bottom. It's not going to go anywhere. On top I put a bungee cord like this. So whatever is inside is secure. What I have inside is a rain poncho for just in case. A little relief cup uh, for when nature falls. These are the Hobie stock holders, uh, rug holders, uh, rod holders. That is, they're exceptionally nice. And another thing I highly recommend is the wind anchor or sock anchor it's called. It's probably $20 on Amazon. This way when it's a little bit windy you can throw it out overboard and it will slow down the drift. 
so you're not going back and forth like every, you know, every few minutes after wind blows you away. Then there's a little towel and that's more or less it. it um, in the corners I zip tied a couple of uh, uh, lengths of uh, this PVC piping, uh, rod holders. I don't really use them uh, as often because like I said the main uh, rod holder holders are the uh, stock hobby ones. These are very sturdy. They install right here in this holes. Um, and they kind of go out at a little angle. They're extremely strong and that's what I use. In the back here you see the system I use to kind of have my wheel easies uh, with me. Um, so when I uh, launch, I don't really bring the, um, the car the back of the car. Instead I put the, the wheelies under this bungees here. So these are held extremely securely. Uh, they're not going to go anywhere. And if you flip, which will happen every now and then, they provide enough buoyancy to really you know, uh, keep the kayak out of the water and for you to be able to flip it back into position you know, to ride it pretty quickly. This is the beach cart. Uh, this is the most recent variety I got from uh, Hobby. Um, it's extremely nice, nice welds, a nice stop here, so the wheel doesn't rub. These kind of, they come with these retainers here, of the, uh, the clips, stainless steel. So uh, again, this one is rated for the entire weight of the Pro Angler, so there's no problem with it. Um, in the back, you see a little prop up uh, thing that I use to keep the kayak as I take it off the trailer. I showed in the previous video. I'll probably simplify it because it's just way too elaborate for the simple purpose that it serves. In the back, I have attached the lengths of bright um, you know, red uh, strap here with two pieces of live reflecting material. This way, when you transport your kayak in the night, they kind of flop in the wind and give you a nice visual clue to cars behind you that, hey, you know, there's a trailer here and a kayak on top of it. I also applied the pieces of reflective material to the sides of the kayak, you can see that lengthwise. This is a little thing I did so I can uh, have an anchor inside of a kayak and move it back and forth. There's a couple of pulleys in there, which are probably completely seized by now. But frankly, it doesn't see too much use and I'll probably get rid of it at some point. Here you have a riding strap, I call it. So it's just the length of a bright um, collar uh, strap, a really strong one with a float attached to the end of it. So if you ever flip the kayak, which you'll discover, it's extremely hard for it to be righted because there's very little that you can grab a two onto on the hull of it. So what happens, uh, the way I use it, I would swim to the side where it is attached and I would throw the entire thing to the other side of the hull, swim there, and then you just tug on this and the kayak will just write uh, itself right up, like literally takes a second or two to do that. So religiously before I launch, I uh, roll up the entire strap and I put it here where I can easily find it. Um, you know, it also helps to memorize on which side that thing is in because, you know, in some stress conditions it might not be apparent. Uh, you might not be able to remember where you put it. Now, another thing here is the stock boards that kayak came with. Uh, a problem, or well, not a problem, a thing that many of us do when we get the kayak, we tend to buy things that we don't really need. So I strongly advise you know, going basic and not doing too much of uh, crazy things, especially the rail system that lots of people invest into. In my opinion, it's just kind of too weak. I removed mine. A reminder of the money I spent, you can see here just a series of holes. So it's on both sides. But the only thing I recommend in the way of add-on items is right here are these uh, road holders right here. These are probably $20 on Amazon. You can see the brand. They come with this uh, basis that you can just screw on onto the boards. And these are used for fluking. So you install them, stick the rod in, and it sticks out to the side of the boat. And as the um, current and waves gently uh, rock the boat, the rod will kind of go back up and down. And that provides that action to the lure that, you know, fluke likes a lot. So if you're tired, you can just let the boat rock the rod uh, by itself. Yeah. And that's about it. Normally when I go um, uh, trolling for stripers or blues or any of that variety, what I do is I use my baitcaster reel, the uh, Kuma Komodo. These things have a clicker, 
So all you do is you reduce the drag, you engage the clicker, and when the fish bites, uh, you have the fish on, you will hear right away that you have something. This way you don't have to constantly look back. Is the rod bent? Do I have anything? And it works great. Um, let me show you something else. This is a common issue with hobbies, um, and it needs to be addressed as soon as you get it, especially if you launch into the ocean. The front bin here and the lid, they're not watertight. So under really heavy waves, the water might be able to sip into the bin. And when you accumulate, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds of water in here, you'll discover the kayak can no longer be controlled and you will probably most likely flip at that point or turtle. So what you need to do is to apply some weather stripping material to the edge here of the bin, apply some weather stripping material to the perimeter of the front lid. And that provides enough of a seal to where it becomes more or less watertight. So that problem you're not going to have. Here you have a stainless loop. You can get it at Leisure Pro or any of those shops that cater to divers and you know uh, people that go diving. Uh, it's just a few dollars, very handy. Um, uh, inside of the kayak is another common thing that lots of people do and I highly recommend. You can see that it is stuffed full of pool noodles. These are lightweight, foamy little you know, two dollar items, you can buy it, you know, it stores everywhere. Uh, the way the kayak comes from the factory, it's naturally buoyant and will not sink under its own weight, even if it's full of water, but it will not be able to maintain a person. If you stick the kayak hole full of those pool noodles, you can see a section here. Um, this way you will add probably, you know, two, three hundred more uh, pounds of buoyancy to it. And this way, if it ever flips and you're unable to ride it, you can still stay with the kayak. It will not go down so you'll be able to save it recover it you know pour the water out and have your you know three thousand um, dollar item back so you don't have to lose it and that's more or less uh, it um, not much really here um, in the way of common failure modes right here under this plastic cover in the back is the rudder and a common issue that happens with kayaks uh, is that uh, the pin that is in there can come out and you will not lose the rudder because it is attached via a little piece of wire. It's under there, over there. But you will lose the ability to control the boat. And uh, when you're in the ocean and you cannot control the boat anymore, that's pretty, pretty bad. Um, so I recommend to remove this and uh, secure the uh, shaft of the, uh, of the, pro of the uh, rudder using maybe some clevis pin or something like that so it's not going to go anywhere. That's what I did. Of course, I only did it after that thing came out on me. Fortunately, I was just 100 yards from the shore, but it took me forever to get there. Another thing I suggest you carry with you in case if you ever have to paddle back is the plug that goes into the hobby opening because otherwise the water will be sloshing in there and it's going to make it harder to paddle. So in my case, I just carry the, uh, the plug in here, inside of the opening. Uh, I hope you can see that it's in there. This way it's out of the way, but it's still with me. It weighs exactly zero. So um, um, a good thing to have it with you. Now, do not plug this hole when you launch in heavy surf, because what might happen is the water will come into the cavity here. And since the hole is plugged, it will not be able to drain out fast enough and you will most certainly flip. It certainly happened to me, and uh, don't do that. But still carry that plug with you in case you're somewhere way out and your Mirage Drive has a technical malfunction and now you have to paddle back to the shore. You can plug this opening with the cassette, with the plug that I showed you. This way it's a little bit easier to, to paddle it back. Uh, some people say that it's impossible to paddle. Uh, Hobie Pro Anglers, it's not true. They paddle quite nicely. Uh, and you can certainly go, you know, half a mile, a mile, or maybe even more if you have to, uh, in order to, you know, get back to the beach. And I think that more or less completes the list of little things that are uh, worth mentioning on a kayak, uh, especially, you know, the way I have it. Like I said, keep it simple. Only buy things when you know that you could use them, you have an actual need for them. Do not go into a kayak, you know, parts uh, store just, you know, to browse it because you will walk out with hundreds and hundreds of dollars of worth of stuff that you will discover you didn't really need 
And um, another thing to do uh, to upkeep it, all the plastic surfaces when you go fishing in the bright sun to get the, you know hit by the UV rays pretty pretty darn hard. And there's this miraculous thing out there that we have in the United States market that is designed to um, protect the plastic against the UV rays. I think it's called Aerospace 402 or 404. I have a spray bottle somewhere here, not with me at the moment, but uh, apply it every now and then to keep uh, the, uh, the plastic of the kayak and the uh, rubber on the kayak from you know, getting brittle from effect of the UV rays. And that's it. There you guys have it. Overview of my kayak.